If you are a conservative, uh, really just someone that wants to know the truth about what's going on in our community and around the world, you're already going to the Tennessee Star. And this morning at 735, Michael Patrick Leahy and Dan Mandis announced a brand new partnership with Super Talk 99.7, WTN and the Tennessee Star. We could not be more pleased to be partners with an organization as wonderful as yours. Michael Patrick Leahy joins us in studio. Hello, sir. Matt, thanks so much. And what a day to launch a news partnership because there has been breaking news since 7.35, all day long. 8 o'clock, all day long with regards to the release of the Covenant Killer Manifesto. Three images from it by Stephen Crowder. Uh, we have a story at the Tennessee Star. We've confirmed with sources that the documents leaked by Crowder are authentic Covenant Killer writings. Uh, we talked to two mem- uh, members of the Tennessee General, General Assembly. You've confirmed it independently uh-huh. with others, as has, in essence, Phil Williams at News Channel 5. Well, I want to talk about Phil in a moment, but uh, let's talk about your um your organization's participation in getting the information out to the general public more than just to these three pages and kudos to Crowder and however he managed to get this because it's all about getting information to the public and the public's right to know what the government knows and what evil existed among us. You and the Tennessee Star have been efforting to get this information made public uh, virtually from the beginning. And I want to kind of start there. Why you felt like it was so important that these writings from this killer, we we know who committed these atrocities. We know that that person is now dead. But it's so important in my mind to get this information to the public. Talk about your efforts with the Tennessee Star to do just that. Well, when this mass shooting, it's in the public interest to release any documents related to the motivations. And that was our, what we wanted to try and do with our litigation, We're a plaintiff in two lawsuits, one in state court, where we have a couple of other plaintiffs, the Tennessee, and have joined about a week after we got in. Uh, The Tennessee Firearms Association uh, are plaintiffs there, as is a state senator out of Chattanooga. Um, And we looked at the law, and the Tennessee public records law is very clear. This is documentation that should be released. It's no question about it. It's been tied up in court. Multiple uh, parties are trying to intervene. That's in the state court. Then about a week later, uh, we filed a lawsuit in federal court to get the FBI to release it. We're represented by different groups there. And both cases have just been languishing for a long time. And then all of a sudden, today, this morning, Stephen Crowder releases what he purports to be uh, three pages, three images from the Covenant Killers Manifesto. Um, And Metro Nashville Police Department first said they have no idea what it's about. Now they're backtracking a little bit. Supposedly, momentarily, Matt, they're going to release a statement to either authenticate or not. We feel pretty strongly from our sources, and you have your own independent Mm -hmm. sources, individuals who have been allowed to read the manifesto, in our case, uh, and who have confirmed these documents released today by Stephen Crowder are authentic according to those sources. Well, and and I did my own sleuthing this morning as you were doing yours, and I spoke to two individuals. Um, One of them had seen the actual documents. He compared uh, his memory of what he had seen with the documents presented by Crowder, and he confirmed to me these are the same. Um, And he was looking at the actual documentation. The other, uh, we we got a secondary confirmation. So I I felt comfortable with it, and I, I feel even more emboldened that this is the real deal, considering that you did your due diligence independent of me. All of us come together and say, okay, everyone is saying the same thing, pointing in the right direction. I would say this, too, that the fact that Metro Nashville Police and other agencies did not immediately denounce the documents as false indicates strongly to me uh, the veracity of the documents themselves. I would think that they would come out very quickly uh, if they were not the real deal and, and say so. We'll see. And they promise a, a statement to be released momentarily uh, about the authenticity of these three images. Now, that's all we have is those three images that Stephen Crowder obtained. He has some sleuthing reporters who apparently had sources. Michael, Pat- Michael Patrick Leahy with us. Why do you feel the entities involved, Metro National Police, FBI, TBI, have been so loath? I understand not wanting to release tactics. You've talked about this on your previous radio show and in the Tennessee Star. 
I understand not wanting to give opportunity to copycats and the like, but much of the information that we've seen today is nothing of the sort. It gives us a glimpse into the evil mindset of the killer. Why do you feel like the entities that we're discussing have been so loath to get this information to the public? You know, that's a mystery, isn't it? Because it would seem to me that uh, they would want this information released as well. The law is very clear on it. Uh, the the parents have been very, very active. Many of the parents, the school, the covenant school, the covenant church, they don't want it released. Now, they believe it would be hurtful to them, but that is an emotional reaction. It is not based on any statute, Matt, not at all. So um, even Phil Williams today, when he in essence said, these three documents that were released uh, are selective. They don't tell the entire story. And subsequently, Phil Williams from News Channel 5 said, you should release the whole thing. I agree with Phil Williams on that. Release the whole thing. Well, and it says something that you have such different entities from different backgrounds. Um, the Tennessee Star, the Tennessee in itself, News Channel 5. Uh, you have a lot of people that are coming at this from very, very different perspectives that are saying very similar things. I don't know of a single soul in the state of Tennessee or really the United States of America that does not grieve, uh, any sane person that does not grieve for the Covenant families. But grief and want, wanting to protect them for any further damage or further harm is a very different thing than shielding this information from the public view. And you've been very clear on that from the beginning. The reason that it's in the public interest to release these documents is to understand the motivation of the killer, see what might have influenced the killer. Uh, were there was there any you know any treatment the killer was undergoing at the time? We don't know that, but we'd like to see all of the documents, all of the statements, and then this will be helpful uh, to law enforcement uh, to prevent these kinds of things from happening in the future. That's the motivation for it. But it's also, uh, Matt, and this is key to understand, it is consistent with Tennessee statute. Mm -hmm. It's consistent with statutes of the United States of America at the national federal level to release these documents. And the arguments against it are largely emotional and not based on law. How does this or does this in, uh, change your lawsuit? That's a great question. In fact, um, breaking a little bit of news here today. So we have uh, a federal lawsuit where we're rep represented by the Wisconsin Institute of Law and Liberty. That's in the uh, Middle Tennessee Court right now, Federal District Court. Judge uh, Trauger is considering it. We've had a summary motion for summary judgment before her since late July. And, uh, well, we're November now, and she's mm -hmm. not ruled on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I talked with our attorney at uh, Dan Lennington at the Wisconsin Institute of Law and Liberty. And he said, look, um, we think this is probably significant. Uh, we are preparing documentation to submit to the court uh, that would say, look, this is already out. Uh, we think it's in the public interest to release the entire thing. So that's what's going on in the state case, uh, in the federal case. The state case, there are more plaintiffs involved. Uh, but I think it's a similar argument. Three documents are out. Um, it, do, it does nothing to serve the public interest uh, to withhold the others when perhaps you don't have a full picture with just those three documents. I mean, and far be it for me to be the guy to give Phil Williams the benefit of the doubt, but <laughs> let's give him the benefit of the doubt that his spirit is in the right place. Well, if that's the case, if... He has spoken to people who genuinely feel like the full picture is not being told. Well, there's a way to tell the full picture, and that is to release the information, redact what you need to redact to protect individuals or whatnot, but give the information to the general public and to the media and allow us to draw our own conclusions. I think this is going to move fairly rapidly uh, now that the, these three have been uh, released. The first question is, are they authentic? We're going to hear something from Metro Nashville Police Department today. They've been very reluctant to comment on it. Uh, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, contacted today by Breitbart, no comment on it. But I think they're going to have to put something out. They're either going to have to confirm or deny. What do you make of our now mayor, Freddie O'Connell, in Nashville? His one comment that I've seen on this matter involves getting to the bottom of who leaked or who released the information. It seems 
their focus is not on the information presented and how we can better prevent another tragedy like this in our community in our state but his focus was on we're going to get to the bottom of this and i've directed uh my staff to go after the leaker and to find who leaked this what's your thought on that i think mayor o'connell who i've interviewed many times um sounds very he's going to love this sounds very nixonian in that statement who's the leaker who's the leaker Mm, that's the wrong question to ask Uh, should we release this document I'd, I'd asked him that many times, and he gave me a wavering kind of answer. He kind of, you know, tries to place both sides against the middle. Um, it, you you hear in his statement, he talks about emotion, feelings of the family, which we certainly understand that they are, they, they feel very strongly about it. But the law, the statutes are clear. This These documents, the release of these documents are in the public interest. There is no question about that. And what's happening in the legal system right now, is various parties are running interference to to delay, 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 delay the release of the documents. Those documents will ultimately be released. Now that three are out, if they're authenticated, and we believe from our sources they are authentic. Certainly. Go ahead and release them. And, st- and stop all of this aggravation that everybody's involved in. Now, for those of us who have consumed uh, what's on the pages that we've seen, working off the assumption, and I believe it true, uh, because of the individuals that I've trusted, that have, I've spoken with about the matter, and I trust people who have also talked. I mean, it's one thing to talk to people who had direct knowledge of the information, and they say, yes, this is the real deal. But then I talk to Michael Patrick Leahy, and he says, yeah, I talked to an independent source, and they said it's the right. So all of those things come together, and you feel comfortable discussing this on a 100,000-watt radio station, right? Mm-hmm. Now that we have consumed a little bit of this, any takeaways from, I mean, it's, There's a lot of hatred. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of misplaced, I would say, evil uh, directed toward the school itself, directed toward white people, directed toward white privilege, although she misspelled the word. Any takeaways from you on what we see on the page? I think there will be. uh, I am probably at this time, I would rather uh, hold my thoughts on that until Mm -hmm. we get all, all documents released. Um, it is those documents uh, paint a picture. Well, Elon Musk commented on this just recently. He said this is clearly uh, somebody who's mentally ill. He just he commented to Stephen Crowder about this. And by the way, Stephen Crowder, we're going to try to get Stephen Crowder on uh, National's Morning News, the Tennessee Star and WTN at seven thirty tomorrow. We have that. We are Very efforting good. that. Very and good. you know, obviously, my question to him is going to be, how'd you get these documents, right? We we have some theories. Uh, a disgruntled person within Metro Nashville uh, government or police department may have delivered them to one of his uh, operators or well, investigators. And kudos to him, but your natural, I mean, for someone like yourself that has worked both in the legal system and worked your channels behind the scenes to try to find as much information as you can find. Someone like myself who's done the same thing. I've not been around nearly as long as you have, so I don't have those connections, but you naturally want to ask that question, right? Mm-hmm. How did you get this, this information that we... And it's no disrespect to him that Michael Patrick Leahy or Matt Murphy would want to make sure that we verify with 100% accuracy that these are actually the real deal. It's going to be very telling what Metro Nashville Police Department says in the statement they have promised to release this afternoon about these three documents that Stephen Crowder purports to be part of the Covenant Killer Manifesto and you have independently verified with sources and we at the Tennessee Star have independently verified that that people have seen this, the Covenant Killer Manifesto say these documents are authentic. Several stories up right now on the Tennessee Star and you can read more about this story coming up at the Tennessee Star dot com. Can you stick around for one more quick segment? I want to ask you about something a little bit unrelated, you bet. but uh, just one more quick segment right after this break. It's two twenty one on Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN, Matt Murphy and you speaking with Michael Patrick Leahy during the break about developments today. Obviously the big news, uh the leak of three pages of manifesto. It, as you read it, as you look at it, it is uh, it is a difficult read because you can feel the evil, uh, you can feel the anger, you can feel the hatred, and you know what the outcome of all of that anger and hatred eventually was, and that was the death of six innocent people, including three children, 
at the Covenant School last spring. Uh, discussing that with Michael Patrick Leahy. But while I have you here, Michael Patrick, I wanted to also congratulate the Tennessee Star in their coverage from a local perspective over some of the pro-Palestinian I kind of put those in quotes because I don't really I'm not really sure what that means anymore. Pro-Palestinian uh, protests that have been happening locally to include Centennial Park over the last weekend. I think they've had a protest every weekend since at four total. Uh, just give me your um, the overview on what your reporters on the ground have seen. Uh, and does this move from it, it feels to me that it's more pro Gaza and pro Hamas than anything. I don't know that you can separate the two. Um, I understand that there are sensitive people that emotionally look at some of the death that's going on there and their heart goes out to some in the Palestinian community. But at the same time, if you examine the situation, you know who is to blame. And it's squarely at the feet of Hamas. Your thoughts? What you're seeing here is the growth of, uh, I think, a very evil coalition. Uh, between Black Lives Matter, Antifa, the progressive left, all funded by left-wing globalist billionaires who, in, es- in essence, want to destroy our constitutional republic in the United States of America. And they are aligned with, they call themselves pro-Palestinian uh, protesters, but really they're pro-Hamas, anti-Israel. Uh, and their objective, ultimately their objective, uh, is to eradicate Israel from the face of the earth and to kill all the Jews. That's really what they're trying to accomplish. It is not pleasant to say, but it is truthful to say that. And so what you see now is uh, they're attempting to use sort of radical organizing techniques uh, to take over American foreign policy uh, and to intimidate people who are Jewish and people who are traditional Christians and people who believe in America, the constitutional republic. Uh, we have we have a battle on our hands right now, and it's happening right here in Nashville, all over the country. Nashville in particular, as you and I talked about in our uh, ex-Twitter little uh, uh, episode on the Tennessee Star Extra, you know, the left has been trying to take over the state of Tennessee for about 20 years. They've been working very hard on it, and they have a lot of these sort of nonprofit groups that are funded by left-wing billionaires, uh, and they've made some progress. Just like in Colorado, as we talked about mm-hmm. uh, before, Colorado 20 years ago was a red state. And then a billionaire on the left said, let's change it. And they organized and funded all of these left-wing activist groups. And it's now a blue state. They're trying to do that here in Tennessee. Uh, and our side needs to understand they are serious about it. Uh, and they must be resisted. They're going to try and grow, grow, grow. And you can see this right now in the state of Tennessee If some of the Democrat elected state officials who you kindly have on your program right Mm -hmm. now are aligned uh, with this pro Hamas anti Israel sentiment. And and even though they deny it. And and by the way, uh, I would note that I heard State Senator Heidi Campbell, uh, who you highlighted, was in attendance. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Tennessee Star has a story on this where Senator Campbell was in attendance at one of these pro Palestinian, pro Hamas rallies. And I invited her on the show to, I heard that to segment. speak, and and she declined. But I heard her explanation. Rather. But then she then explained that oh, she was just there to get the sense of it, and she didn't like it. Uh, she didn't like the direction it was going. To which I responded, "Well, then maybe you owe it to your constituents to come on and explain that in a full throated manner publicly, as opposed to privately." She said that she did not want to fan the flames. That was her statement about your piece. Well, let's just say this. Um, When you're caught with your hand in the cookie jar, you try to come up with a story to explain why your hand really wasn't in the cookie jar. That's well said. Michael Patrick Leahy, this is going to be a wonderful relationship between Supertalk 99.7 WTN and the Tennessee Star. I'm so excited about it. And one other thing. Yes. um, Listeners to WTN are part of this citizen journalism. Because when they call in and they give you or Dan Mandis or Chris Hand uh, or Brian Wilson uh, some information... And it's newsworthy. We follow it up on up on it. In fact, we've got a story brewing from a caller to Chris Hand's story, uh, show that will be very interesting. We'll break it sometime this week. I absolutely love it. It's going to be a great partnership. Thank you. Go over to the Tennessee Star. If you don't already have the Tennessee Star bookmarked, uh, you need to do that very uh, well right now, today. Thank you, Michael Patrick. And Matt Murphy, even though 
You're a Georgia Bulldog fan. Yeah. I am delighted you live here in state income tax free Tennessee. <laughs> Absolutely love it. I've enjoyed it. And go watch the Tennessee Star Actual where Michael Patrick Leahy and I sat down and talked for a good 25 or so uh, minutes. We did that last Friday, and you can find it on X slash Twitter 231. Super Talk 99.7 WTN.